I've read, I've read uh, Gulf of Oh, okay, okay. GLM with uh, Bradley Campbell? What? I think it's it's like the little red one. Oh, the, the gospel for Mormons. I thought you said God loves Mormons. No, I, I don't Have know. you heard of them on YouTube? No, but oh, okay. really like, I've seen a lot of YouTube videos. And okay. Like, I'd say probably maybe eight to the one that I've seen are like accurate about the church. So it's like... What do you mean? What's inaccurate? Well, just like a lot of the claims that just I like, see on YouTube are just like not true. Like, like what, for example? Well, there's like a million I could get into. I mean, like, I don't have specific ones or anything. Do you think like on exaltation? I mean, sure. Like there's a lot of straw man arguments that have to do with exaltation and things like other doctrines and things where like you know there's a lot of truth obviously you know this is coming from somewhere most of the time a lot of the claims about the church but most of them are either these are you know, straw man arguments you take something and you kind of make something out of it it's not or it's something that's not really doctrine that like it's just kind of in the culture in the mainstream there's a lot of things like that so like kind of the idea for example you know and, and this is something you'll definitely agree with and probably something you'll say if i don't bring it up first right you'll say well you know you are in a workspace for that thing, right? Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'd completely reject that. Okay. Right. How do you get to heaven then? How do you become exalt exaltation? Only through the grace of Jesus Christ. That's, that's literally the only way to do it. Not obedience to the gospel ordinances and principles? Well, it's really important. Obedience is important, right? It's like, for example, right? Say I'm, you know, God's, and this is where, you know, I might be a little bit of divergence here because we view the plan of salvation in a way that mainstream Christians don't necessarily do the same way, right? I'd say, well, God's purpose is for me to become like his son, Jesus Christ. Right? That's what he wants for all believers to act like Jesus Christ. Right? The Sermon on the Mount, we can read exactly how he wants us to do that. You know, I think the Book of Mormon offers a lot of insight, a lot of commentary into how we can do that, right? And so ultimately, if you think about it in that context, you know, say, say I, you know, say my, my parents give me piano lessons or something, right? And they pay for all these lessons, they do everything, and they say, hey, you know, as a result, of these lessons, like I want you to become a piano master. The I just Brad want you to Wilcox practice thing? the piano. Sure, yeah, Brad Wilcox, right? That's uh, what you're using the analogy yeah. of the piano player. Yeah, yeah, you talked about that, right? Like me practicing has absolutely nothing to do with like the actual gift that it is to receive those piano lessons from my parents, right? In this context, there's nothing to do with that. It is ultimately to become who my parents want me to be. There is this gift that they give me to say, here, here is everything. I'm going to do whatever I can to help you out. All you have to do is just try. Right, and that's what God says. And I, you know, if, if that's like works based or whatever, like in, you know, semantics, it all day. I don't think that has anything to do with works. That's completely to do with the grace of Jesus Christ. Because like, there's nothing I can do on my own without Jesus Christ. It doesn't matter. I could keep every, you know, I could read like the whole like standard works of the church or whatever. You know, find every little commandment. You know, live the whole freaking law of Moses if I want. It won't make a difference, right? It will yeah. not make a difference. Can't be perfect. You cannot be perfect. God's standard is perfection. I can't be perfect. Only through the grace of Jesus Christ. Can I accept that? Right. And so that's, you know, that's what I would say. And you say, well, okay, well, what does that require? And I'd say, well, you know, follow Jesus Christ. Because that's what he asks. He says, take up my cross and follow me. And, you know, we'll disagree there. That's fine. But that's just the way I see it. That's what Jesus Christ wants from us. And, like, you know, I don't really view, like, God's not just trying to, like, drag me. He's not, like, you know, hoping to kind of pull me out of this, like, little pond and put me in, like, a big whatever and, you know, just kind of, like, plug me into heaven. Right. I think he wants us to become, to change. Right. Not just to, like, Right, I don't really, I don't, to be honest, I don't really understand what, like, kind of the traditional evangelical perspective is on, like, what does God want for me other than just, like, you know, this kind of, like, to follow him, whatever, give him the yeah. glory, worship him, right? Those things are all yeah. great, right? But, like, I don't That's not enough the, for you? No, I just don't understand the purpose of my creation. Okay, so, right. so here, here, this would be my question. So, yeah. it wouldn't be enough for you to worship God for all eternity. No, it what makes it worth it for you is to become a God one day? No, that's not what it is at all, right? And that's something, there's another strong man, right? Where there is no glory, that none of the glory of exaltation, right? you read any of the teachings of prophets, you read any of the scriptures, none of this glory of exaltation, right, has anything to do with like, oh, I'm so glorious, and I'm this being, and you know, it's not like, we think of the way that God is, right, where he's, you know, this all omnipotent creator, all these things, like, we don't know exactly what exaltation looks like. The doctrine of the church is that we will live eternal life, which is kind of the life God lives, full of joy, right? It says in, uh, what is it, Romans, right, we are heirs, join heirs with Christ, right, mm -hmm. we inherit all the Father has. That doesn't mean that, you know, I get to sit there and kind of make my own planet and just kind of goof around and whatever I want all day, right? And it gives me all the glory. Because that's not how we view God the Father, right? We view him as as the creator of all things, but truly in like a benevolent, like... But he didn't, father, right? he didn't create his father, right? What? He didn't create his father, So the doctrine, so you're talking about eternal regression now, right? So yeah. eternal regression comes from... Well, you said he created all things. Did he create his father? Well, I don't necessarily believe that God, like, has a father. I don't I believe God had a father, had a father, had a father. Oh, you, right? you deny that, then. Well, I do, yeah. <laughs> oh, wow, I, I would that's say, interesting. I would say a very, very very large percent of members of our church do because it's just not something it's, it's something that's plucked kind of half out of context from a sermon that's really hard to pin down yeah. the most quoted sermon during any general conference sure oh there's truth in there oh, 100%, the fall at right? discourse oh there's totally truth out there, right? as man is god once was as god is man may become prophet that's, that's lorenzo, lorenzo snow, snow. do you disagree snow, with him Smith. i know 
that he's the couplet summarizing the King Fallout discourse. Do you disagree with one of your prophets? Oh, no. I mean, that's cool. No. And, and the man now is, right? We look at the King Fallout sermon, you can read it in context. I've read the whole thing multiple cool. times. Right. So yeah. if, if you read it genuinely in context and you try to try and eisegete kind of this Mormon straw man into it, right? Then as God is, yeah. man once was, as For sure. man is God. Was yeah. Jesus Christ not as man once was? What do you mean? Was Jesus Christ not as man once was? Was he not he, fully man? Well, before that, he was well, he's fully, fully, God, fully man, right? Fully God, fully man. 100%. Did he create Lucifer or is he the spirit brother of Lucifer? What? Like in one context? Are you talking about Jesus Christ? So yeah, says, yeah. Okay, so Jesus Christ, right? There's a scripture in Corinthians. He created all things, both in heaven and earth, right? Oh, that's that, Colossians 1.16, okay, not cool. Corinthians. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Right. Heaven so, and on earth, visible and invisible. Did he create God the Father? No. Is God the Father in heaven? God the Father? Is God, God the Father, Father is God. We're talking about yes. all created things. Okay. So it's a different so category So there's than some God. sort of differentiation here. Between God right. and created things, okay. yes. Okay, I, I don't really believe, I mean, if you read, if you read like Abraham, right, I don't believe any of us are created beings in the same way, right? If I, you know, we use this all the time, like, you know, I'm sure you've talked to like atheists and things when you're trying to get like apologetics, right? You say, well, when you see a sandcastle on the beach, what's going on? Good. So, you know, you see a sandcastle on the beach, right? You look at it, you go see it, you go, okay, some guy made that sandcastle. Right? You know, it doesn't nest like, you know, in my view, you know, you go see the creator, like, did he go in there and like create every individual grain of sand whenever he created St. Thomas for the Beach? No. Right? And so as members of the church, we reject kind of the idea of Crossio ex nihilo, right? That yeah. God created all things out of nothing. Yeah. Right? That's something that is, in, in my view, and there's not something, you know, you can say, like, if you read into the Bible, you try to get that out of the doctrine out of the Bible. That's something you can read into it all day. But when we read about creation, there is no differentiation in the Bible between Crossio ex nihilo, which is this kind of creedal idea, and just the doctrine of creation. It doesn't say specifically, okay, God created all things out of nothing, right? In the beginning, so God. Yeah. Created. Yeah. Yeah. The heavens and the earth. Yes. Right, what does it mean to create? I created a sandcastle last week. Does it mean I made the sand? No, no, that's organized. That's not create. Okay. Are we talking about English words here then in the translation? Well, bara the would be the only. Hebrew word, uh -huh. uh, which means create. And that's Are you familiar with what... Michael Heiser's work? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> okay. Are you familiar with Michael Heiser actually saying that he does not believe anything that Mormons believe about God? Yeah, that's fine. I'm so not, why I'm are not... you quoting a biblical Trinitarian scholar? Because he, he has would disagree with you. Bible, but he, good, but he would insights. disagree with what that's you're fine. saying. He believes in creation ex nihilo. Okay, that's fine. So what are you because that word, because that word isn't, it doesn't, there's nothing in that word. Barak Hooray means he created it from nothing. It, Even it Jews believe that. Okay. That's you fine. are actually reading the interpretation of Joseph Smith into the Old Testament. Why should I believe Joseph Smith's a prophet? Why is he a prophet? Well, you can look by his fruits, right? You read the book, have you read the Book of Mormon? Uh, I've read, not the whole thing, but I've read most okay. of it. And I say 97% of it. Okay. I've listened to the whole Book of Mormon, okay. but not read it. So that's fine. that. Right. So here's how I know the Book of Mormon is the word of God, right? I can take a look at the Book of Mormon. There's a, there's a teaching in the Book of Mormon. It's in, it's in a sermon called Alma, right? He, 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 yeah, I'm Alma, right? He, he, yeah, yeah, yeah. he talks about faith, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, he talks about three things that you can use to identify faith, right? To identify what something is good. And he says, when you experiment upon my words, you can look at the fruit of that, and you can see that it enlarges your soul, it enlightens your understanding, and it begins to be delicious unto you. Right? Those three things, right? I look at the teachings of the Book of Mormon, and they enlarge my soul. They help me become more like the Savior. It enlightens my understanding. It teaches doctrines that I think are really, is, I think I think the, the alternative doctrines taught in traditional Christian circles often are very, very, like, I, I think they're silly, frankly, sometimes. I think they paint a picture of God who's not the God that I know and love. Yeah, a different God, right? What? A different God, right? Sure, I, I don't worship the, the Jesus Christ of the Nicene Creed. I don't. Like, right. like I, I know a lot of Christians be like, a lot, Or the Jesus Christ church. of the New Testament, for example. Okay. Not I'm, just the Nicene Creed. Okay, that's fine, whatever. You can you can make that argument. And that's, I think it's a little bit silly. But, like, I believe, I don't believe in, like, the, the, the triune being thingy, right? I believe in a God that's comprehensible and knowable. You believe right? in a created God. John John 17, 3 says, this is life eternal to know God yes. the Father, amen. Jesus Christ, whom he has sent. Yes, right? amen. I don't think you can know an incomprehensible, this weird incorporeal, you know, you get the Westminster Confession of body parts or passions. I don't think you can know that God. I don't think eternal life can be found in a God like that. Okay. Because it's, it's incomprehensible, it's incorporeal. I have no way of forming a relationship with a being like well, that. Well, I know him by what he's revealed. But yeah. the question again, so you believe that the Book of Mormon is true because of what Alma says. Why should I believe the Book of Mormon to be true? Because it will enlarge your soul and enlighten your understanding and it will become delicious to you as you apply its teachings. Gotcha. So we have a prophet then, Joseph Smith, who's giving us a revelation. Let's say he's translating golden plates, right? Yep. I'll, I'll give you that. I'll grant it. There's okay. golden plates. He translates them. Cool. The question again is, why should I believe what he's translating is true? I'm not going to believe it because By he actually... Truth. So there's multiple tests of the prophet in scripture. There's Deuteronomy 13, yep. 1 through 6, yep. right? It says, if a prophet arises, a dreamer of dreams produces miracles, signs, and wonders. So even if things happen, if it looks legit, but he leads you after other gods, gods you have not known, do not believe in them. Deuteronomy 18, one false prophecy, false prophet. Don't believe in them. 
by their fruits. I get that from Christ, right? Second Corinthians 11 tells us, it's a warning from Paul that there's people who will come and preach a different Jesus, a different gospel and a different mm -hmm. spirit. And I would he, say that is, I would say that's the Nicene creation. Just, just listen, I'm not, I'm, I'm quoting I'm, scripture I'm, to you. That's fine. So I'm not quoting I'm just telling you what that means in the, in the way I see it. Just, just listen. Mm -hmm. But what you're saying though is, I'm, I'm talking about scripture here. Yeah. Just listen. So Paul warns that there's people who preach a different Jesus, a different gospel and a different spirit. Yes. And then he also goes on to say that there's people who will masquerade as angels of light, workers of righteousness. It looks like they're doing great things. It looks like their fruit tastes great, but their ends are the ends of death because they're doing it under a different Jesus, a different gospel and a different spirit. So what I would say about Joseph Smith, according to previous revelation, number one, he leads you after another God, a God you have not known. You already told me that you also think I worship a different God. Thank you for that. I would say according to the Old Testament, Isaiah 43, 10, you've probably heard this. Before me, there is no God formed, neither shall there be after me. Isaiah 44, 6, I'm the first, I'm the last. Beside me, there is no God. Deuteronomy 6, 4, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, right? John chapter 1, in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. All things were created through Him. There was nothing that came into being unless it was created through Him. So what we find in John 1, even in the Greek, is enarche ein halagos, and the word ein is translated into was, and what is being spoken here from the Apostle John, the one who walked with Jesus, not Joseph Smith, he is stating when the word ein is being used that without origin to reference, space, or time, he was already there before anything was created. And then when he talks about things that are created, it's egonetto, which means came into being from not having being. You talked about something earlier by saying that, no, it's like sand. John chapter one says, no, it says things came into being and that Jesus was there before they ever came into being. And I'm quoting to you, the apostle John, okay? And I would say, according to the apostle John, the Jesus Christ of Joseph Smith is false, therefore I reject the Book of Mormon. Okay, you're entitled to that. Yeah, I'm entitled to that, mm -hmm. but that's actually scripture. Okay. Okay, so well, the it's Apostle an John- It's scripture, right? I quoted it to well, you. Well, okay, I, I get that, right? Yeah. And the scriptures, and, and I think this is a really silly point because I run into this one a lot, right? I served a mission, you know, I've had many conversations with evangelicals, with Catholics, with, you know, various types of Protestants and different Christians, right? Even Muslims, right? And yes, you say, well, I'm just telling you what the scripture says, right? I'm just telling you what the scripture says. You are using scripture in a way that implies that there is implication to it, right? And that's fine. Absolutely. You're saying, well, this means this, right? Yeah. And do you agree that two people in good faith, right? Ignore, you know, take, take the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints out of this. Take a Presbyterian and a Catholic, for example. Can they both, I mean, are you a Catholic or Christian? Oh, I'm Baptist. Well, what I'm saying, are you like a Catholic or Christian type of? Uh, if, if a Catholic believes that there's external okay. obedience that they must adhere to, like the okay. merits of salvation, external from themselves. So just like two they, Christians, right? So take like, you know, two, two Baptists, yeah, yeah. whatever, right? Can they have a conversation about a specific scripture and in good faith disagree about the interpretation of that scripture and still both be Christian, right? Uh, not if they disagree on John chapter one and okay, believe that I'm Jesus just, Christ I'm just, is an eternal being. Okay, so if they disagree about some of the nuances Yeah, of there's it, things called adiaphora, okay, that's which fine. is- Do they agree with some of the nuances? That, does that both, does it make one of them not Christian? No, not if it's adiaphora. Okay. Adiaphora is non-essentials to the gospel. If okay. they differ on adiaphora, then one is definitely not a Christian because if you believe in a different Jesus, a different gospel and a different spirit, that's then fine. You're, then you're no longer. My point a is that my point is that it is possible for two people in good faith to read the same scripture and have something come out of it a little on bit. On non-essentials, right? yes. Right. Well, it, it, it's on essentials as well. Right? Can two people read the same thing and come away with different ideas? Maybe one's wrong, maybe one's right. I don't care. Right. Well, Maybe truth is wrong. objective, well, I right? That. So I agree. It's but outside can two of interpretation. people read the same thing and come away with different ideas? Yes, absolutely. Okay. One's wrong, one's right. It doesn't matter, right? Yes. And they disagree. Yes. Okay. So you quote all these scriptures at me, right? Uh huh. And I'm going to quote a bunch of scriptures at you, and ultimately you read those scriptures differently than I do, and I read those, you know. Why is that though? That's the question. Well, why? Why is that? Yeah. Well, why? How are you making that interpretation? I'm making that interpretation. Yeah. Well, something that's really nice is that I don't believe that God dropped 66 books on the rest of us and said I'm never going to say a word again. So it's really nice that I don't feel really the need to go and dig into like. The, you know, I love to I actually love to look, look into like the, the Greek and some of the things, right? I, yeah, I good. Love to do it, right? good, good, good. But and I'm no scholar. I couldn't start going a bunch of Greek stuff. I, you know, you probably know a lot more about the Bible than me. That's fine, right? Right? You probably do this. You probably studied a lot more than I do. There's so much I don't know, bro. <laughs> keep going, keep going. Problem, right? Right? There's so much about, yeah. you know, the, whatever. Anyway, I believe that God continues to speak, that he continues to reveal, right? That's one of the articles of faith. I can grant you that, but how do you know it's from God? That's the question. Well, I know it's from God because I know where it comes from. Right, I know when it comes from a prophet of God, it's of God. Unless it contradicts previous revelation. When it comes from a prophet of God, it's of God. That, that, that Unless my... it contradicts previous revelation, that's what God says. Okay, that's, that's fine. But when it comes from a prophet of God, that prophet is speaking for God. 
Right. And he contradicts himself. The Holy Spirit contradicts himself. Well, the Holy the Holy Spirit doesn't like contradict himself. I don't know why. We're, like, so you're, if it comes from God, yeah. it should be consistent with previous revelation. Yes, that's fine. Joseph Smith is inconsistent so with previous revelation. So coming back to my point, right? So what Joseph Smith says is inconsistent with the way you read the scripture. No, here's the thing. I okay, asked no, you. I'm not saying, why I'm saying you, you're right or wrong. I'm, I'm saying, saying it is inconsistent. Why did you, you interpret it that way? What you're doing is you're reading the Bible through the lens of Joseph Smith. I read it through the lens of the Holy Spirit and through his prophets and through his servants. You're reading it through the Church of Jesus Christ of, of Latter day Saints. And I'm telling you of God. that those glasses uh -huh. are leading to eisegesis, incorrect oh, interpretation. I can do a different Jesus, Jesus at all. A different gospel and a different that's, that's my whole point. That's what I was getting at. Is that I, I don't have any issue with Isaac Jesus at all. Because I don't believe that I need to take these, like there's a specific set of 66 books and I have to look at everything in the context of that. Because I think God still speaks. And so I can look to what he says through his servants and then I can compare that to previous revelation and it helps us understand what that teaches. So you can be led astray then. What? Can so you can be led astray. No, I just listen to a prophet of God. You have no way in order to know it's true. Well, I do because it comes from a prophet of God. It all, it, all rests from, it all rests for me upon the foundation of the Book of Mormon. I know the Book of Mormon is the Word of God. I have, I have such a sure witness of that. It led me to Jesus Christ. Right? And you say, well, is you wrong, Jesus, whatever. I don't, it led me to Jesus Christ. I know the voice of God. I know what, you know, what, what it feels like when He's speaking to me. Mm -hmm. I know how to listen to His voice. I know it. And when I, like, but now you're basing that on your feelings. No, it's right? not my. No, it's not at all my feelings. Because you There's said a you know what you're, You said you know what you're feeling. So was a prophet speaking? Well, I know what I'm feeling. Sure, because I know what it feels like when the Spirit of God speaks to me. I know it because He, he speaks to me in many different ways. But can right? you, can you trust your voice. feelings though? No, but I can trust the Spirit because I know the difference. Because I've learned the difference over a lot of time. But it's your experience Practice. of knowing that it's the Spirit through your feelings, is it not? Sure, but when those when those promptings are confirmed, so you're basing it, it off of experience. So if, no, if it I, does not sound like a testimony to me okay. because it says in Jeremiah 17, 9, my heart is deceitful no, of all my things. Heart. I'm my heart. I'm listening to my heart. Desperately wicked. No, I'm listening to the spirit of God. When when the spirit of God gives me what I what I perceive, I think this could be a prompting, and I act on it. How do you know it? What? But how do you know I it? I act. That's how I know. Okay, so you, you act on it, and it's not the way you feel at all. So you don't base it on no, any because, experience. No, because it takes experimentation, right? So if, if I'm trying to say, okay, you know, what does this feel like? Well, if all of a sudden I think, well, this could be it, and then I act on that, and all of a sudden this prompting leads to some crazy miracle where I get to work some miracle in the life of someone else because God gave me that blessing, then I know that that came from God, right? If God led you, you know, if God leads you to, say there's a man walking on the street, and you feel like God leads you to that person, and you say, well, this person needs to be saved, and you walk up to him, and all of a sudden he's like, you know what? I've been thinking about leaving the Mormon church for a million years, and I, I need the real Jesus, right? Well, you'd probably say, well, that was probably a prompting from God to go help save this man, right? Yeah. Well, I would say the same thing. Right, is that when I have a prompting like that, I go and I, I'm able to work some miracle in the life of someone else that comes from the Spirit. Yeah. And so as a result of doing that over and over and over again over the course of years, right, it takes a lot of practice, it takes a lot of effort, right? I think the argument, though, coming from the, the Old Testament is that it's anticipated, right? Deuteronomy 13, if a prophet or a dreamer of dreams arises among you, produces miracles, signs, and wonders, but leads you after other gods, do not believe them. So I don't disagree. I think that if someone believes in a false Christ and a false spirit, so that's where it boils down to. Listen, that's our miracles issue. still, yeah, miracles could still occur, but it doesn't mean it's actually God. Okay. So if it contradicts previous revelation, I must reject it. Your interpretation of that? No. Right? No, no, no. Yes. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but by no means will my words True. pass Amen. away from Jesus. Do you believe that I the do. Bible is 100% accurate? What? Well, do I believe the Bible is 100% accurate? No, because it was written on my man. So you don't agree with Jesus? Do you think anything that man does is perfect? It says, holy men of God God's spoke words, as they were carried God's by the words. Holy Spirit. So God continues to speak. His words will never cease. No, no, no. That's not what the scriptures say. It says, okay. long ago, in many times, in many ways, God spoke to our fathers through the prophets. But in these last days, he has Hebrews spoken to us. Right? Uh, Hebrews 1, 1. Okay. He has spoken to us by his oh, that's son. that's right. That one's about faith, 11, 1. Yeah, yeah, faith yeah, 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 yeah. That's, like, that's actually a good one, too. 1, so, 11, 1, same thing, right? Yeah. Stuff. So... In terms of Jesus, right? And this is my biggest burden for you. I, I hear you. I get where you're coming from. My biggest burden is this, right? So the reason why I come out here is because I care about you, number okay. one. And I care about you because if you're presented with a different gospel, whether or not you agree with me, I can't change your mind, right? I don't believe I could. I don't think my wit, my intellect, my persuasiveness can save you, okay? It says in John chapter 6, it says, No one can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And then it says... In all that the Father has given to me, I, will, I won't lose one of them, but I will raise them up on the last day. John 17, you quoted it earlier, Jesus Christ says that he doesn't lose one of his sheep. He guards them all, that they're held secure and protected from the evil one solely through him and their faith in him in knowing who he is. Beautiful section of scripture. So John chapter 17 is my favorite scripture in the Bible. Oh, it's so By good, far. bro. It's so powerful. It's so powerful. I love it because it's like Jesus's prayer for me. Because yep. you're reading it and he's like praying for the disciples, praying for the disciples. And he goes, but I'm not only praying this for the disciples, but I pray for this for all who believe in me. 
that then maybe one father is thou art in me and I in thee, right? Beautiful. So, so hold on to the fact that in that, in John 17, Jesus says he can't lose any of his sheep, that he guards them, that it's not up to them for their salvation to be held secure. Think about that a little bit. Well, J Jesus said that my sheep, they know my voice, Amen. right? They listen and they come. Yes. Right? And so that's where I would say, well, you know, Jesus Christ, know, they, they, his sheep, they know his voice, right? Why does Christ use the analogy of sheep? I love that. He uses sheep, right? Not any other farm animal. Because one, there's there probably a million things to that, right? We can talk about like how, what the lamb symbolizes and all these things, right? But a sheep is an animal that runs away, right? It runs away from the flock. Yes, yes. And that's why the shepherd has to go get him and return the one. Right? Yes, yes, yes. And yes. so I think that, you know, whether or not I'm one of Jesus Christ's sheep, you know, I can go run off and he's going to come back and get me. But ultimately, if that sheep doesn't come back, then that sheep doesn't come back. But that's not what God's word says. Right. He says, all that the Father yes, has all, given all to me. All in his fold, all in his fold, yes. He says, all, all that fold. he has, no, he says, whoever the Father gives to me, comes to me. And he says, I lose not one of them. I lose not one of them, but raise them up on the last day. My eternal security his of sheep, my salvation, yes. And his sheep follow him and they hear his voice. No, no. None no, no, of them go that's off. John 10, that's John 10. No, no, yes. Jesus says, My sheep, they, yes, but they listen, know me and they I'm hear interpreting my voice. John 10 with John 6 by okay. saying that not one of, the, one of his actual sheep that run off will ever be gone forever. He, he is the one who raises them on the last day. He says he won't lose one of them. John chapter 6, read it when he's okay. talking to them. Read so, it, so, so good. Perseverance the same. So you believe in, so are you full, are you Calvinist or are you? I am a Calvinist, Are you Calvinist, yes. sorry. I, so, I won't even, I, like, I have to catch the bus. You know, probably uh, bro, just let me, let me leave you yeah, with I'll let you. I'll let you give one more thing because I'll, I'll give the thank bus you, again. But I don't have time to get into Calvinism, but you know, like ultimately I think that the fact, and here's why I see a really big issue, is the fact that here we are talking about the differences and you know, this is where I think were the big differences where you say, well, you know, this contradicts what we know about God, right? That's kind of your big argument, right? And so, of course, well, it can't be of God because it leads them to a different God, even if these fruits are good, right? And ultimately, I don't see how... Well, bad fruit, bad fruit is bad doctrine. Bad fruit okay. is a different Jesus. Bad fruit is a different gospel. Okay, I was paraphrasing your call. But I don't see in any way how the Jesus Christ, how the God the Father, how the Holy Spirit of the Old Testament, of the New Testament, at all, right? I'll even take aside the Book of Mormon for a second, right? Put all our relation aside, can... You know, the, the only God who delights in choosing people to go to hell, right? The only God who delights in throwing babies in the fire in the Old Testament is Molech, right? And so a God whose glory is caused by deliberately, you know, he picks, he says, this is my sheep, this guy's not, you know, left hand, right Romans hand, right? chapter 9. Yeah, right. Jacob I loved, Esau I have hated. Right. Noah's Jesus Ark. Teaches, Jesus teaches in the New Testament. What Jesus teaches in the New Testament is those on his right hand are those who fed me when I was, you know, when I, when I was hungry and clothed me when I was naked and, you know, brought me in when I was, all these things, right? Those are his sheep, right? So I definitely think we can choose to be at the right hand of God, right? Because he's given us the gift of grace. He says, all you got to do is take it. If I'm stranded in the woods, I have no way of getting back. It's the middle of the night. There's some bear chasing me, right? And someone comes and drives along and gets in the car. It is not d diminishing at all of that person's gift if all I have to do is get in the car, right? It is you not, were dead in your trespasses and sins yes. in which you once walked. Yes, and no can one me. can come to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. And all that the Father has given to me, it's the will of the Father that I lose not one. John chapter 6, okay. read it over and over and over again. I'm quoting to you what it okay. says. Yeah, and, and again, and I disagree with the interpretation of it. That's fine. And I'm, many, I'm many just Christians what it who says. you would say we're saved will disagree with you on that as well. Am I wrong? That's possible, yeah. Right. Arminians. Right. Okay. But yeah. but here's the thing: an Arminian wouldn't disagree with me on the nature of God, that's fine. the Trinity, I and the gospel. That's fine. Right. I'm not talking about. I'm not saying oh, Arminian saved, Calvinian saved. I'm just saying there are people who disagree with that specific interpretation of the way that God calls His sheep, who you would argue are saved in the kingdom of God. Now, when I do it in a different way than the Arminian, you say, oh, well, you're going to hell. Different right? God, different gospel, different spirit. No, again, I, I do reject the, the the traditional Christian God. I don't think that that is a being that that. I, I don't think that, frankly, I don't think the Calvinist God is being worthy of worship, frankly. Oof. So the, say, so well, that's, that's the actually, God that you think would, is worthy of your worship is the one that will make you a God so that you will be worshipped one day. No, the one that will bring me up, will raise me to be like he is so I can give him the glory forever. Does God receive worship? So I can give him, yes, absolutely. Will you receive worship? What? I, I don't know. I have no idea. I literally have no idea. If you read the thing, if you read, as, if you read the King As Paul, man so is, God it, once was, as God is, man may become. Does that mean I get worshipped? As God is, man may become. Yes. And, and and does that mean, and do you, are you an authoritative why are you shying, teaching? Why are you shying away I'm from me, I'm not shying away from that doctrine. I'm telling you what the doctrine of the church is. And you can straw man all you want. That's not a straw man. Does God receive worship? What? Yes. Okay. So as God is, man may become. As God is, what does that mean? That can mean a million things. God. Does that mean I am the Father? Does that mean I am, does it mean I am the Father and in the Trinity with Jesus Christ? No. Of course not. Right? 
you lost me there. What do you mean by that? Well, I mean like, so if, if say that couple is true, right? For a second, hypothetically, right? So all of a sudden, I'm going to become like God. Does that mean that all of a sudden, all of a sudden I'm going to have a son who is Jesus Christ and everything's going to repeat itself all over again? I don't know. E exactly my point. That is exactly my point. I don't have those answers. Those answers are not revealed to us. Well, I'm not LDS. We that's what I'm saying. Well, like, I know, but I, I don't know either. Right? These answers are not revealed. Do I need to know? No. Oops. I know that God wants to raise me. So was Joseph years. Smith have you, read, have you read Mere Christianity by C.S. Lewis? Yes. He, he actually touches on this so beautifully, right? I love C.S. Lewis, the way he teaches the exact same idea that I believe. Right? Okay. I love the way he talks about it. So, so you don't think that Joseph Smith in the King Follett Discourse, at the beginning of the King Follett Discourse, when he says... He says, no I know you worship the way God the Father is worshiped. No, no, listen, listen. He says, I'm about to give you a revelation that no man has ever given to you. The knowledge of God so far has been to that of the beasts. He says this right at the beginning. He says, prepare yourselves. I'm about to give you the best revelation you've ever heard, okay? Even Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, who came to make the Father known, John 1, 18, even what he did wasn't enough. Now, I'm going to give you a revelation. He says, even what Jesus did isn't enough. He says that. He says the knowledge. Yes. He says the knowledge. Even what Jesus did isn't enough. Amen. Well, that's what he's say saying. Where's he say the knowledge of God that we have is that of the beasts. The knowledge of God that I have comes from Jesus Christ and his apostles. I that wasn't even enough. It comes from it comes from a, it comes from the Council of Nicaea. No. It does. It comes from that's area. a horrible it from, argument. It comes from some weird. Yeah. It, it just comes from it's bad doctrine. It's something that, you know, it, it's something that's ridiculous. It's something that makes God knowledge, I can't comprehend. He says, the knowledge that you have is to that of the beasts. Yes, okay? I agree with that. And then he says, to know that the nature of God is the most important thing. Yes. And he says, and so you all have nature, got to, to learn ourselves. to become gods, just like God has done before you. You have imagined and supposed that God has been God from all eternity. I will take the away the veil so that you may see. You have got to learn to become gods. That's what he says. Yeah, it's in the King Paul discourse. Do, right? and we do have to learn to become God. Does God receive worship? Become... What? Does God receive worship? Yes. Will you one day? I don't know. I, I think it's hard for you to admit it, man. No, it's not hard for me. I think to admit Joseph it. would say absolutely. Okay. Did he say it? According to the King Paul discourse. Did he? Where does it say? Yeah, it? All gods have done it before him. And it says that I will receive worship. God the God Father had a God once himself. It's like C.S. Lewis says it. C.S. Lewis says it wonderfully, right? He says, "Oh, what is it for?" I escape my mind, but he says it. I think he says it wonderfully. And he talks about how essentially, you know, the greater he says a human is more capable, man is more capable of worship of God than a chicken, right? Or something. I can't remember the exact way he quotes it. Yeah, we're made in the image Jesus of God to right? worship Him. Absolutely, yes, correct, different right? than the uh, the creation right. in general. And so, if God raises me to become with the glory and the power and dominion that he has, Oof. then ultimately I can remain That scares ghost. me, man. Okay. It scares me too, frankly. So so if you think God, God the Father... I'd have to be, I'd have to be, to, for God to trust me, there's a scripture in the Doctrine and Covenants, and it says that as soon as man is given a little authority, paraphrasing, it says as soon as man is given a little authority, you immediately begin to exercise him righteous dominion. Right. And that's absolutely true. And so that's why atonement of Jesus Christ is so necessary to perfect us. Is that I don't believe, and this is something that, that, that is true, this is something that is doctrine, is that, you know, if I all of a sudden, if I have infinite authority, right, then my tendency and my temptation to abuse that authority is infinite. Why? Because I am mortal, because I am weak, because I am incomplete, I am not perfect. I believe that one day I will be perfect because Jesus Christ commands me to be perfect. When? Matthew 5:48. When, no, when do you think you'll be perfect? Oh, I have no idea. Sometime, far future. I don't know. I don't know. But I know it's only possible through the grace of Jesus Christ. And that is what I do. And I know that, that through his atonement that I can be saved, that I, that I will be saved. And all I have to do is take up my cross and follow it. It's, it's interesting because in 1 John it says, He who says they are without sin... The truth is not in them. Did I say that? Well, if you're going to be perfect one day, you're going to be without sin. God will, yes. Do you, okay, so John will you be says... Without, so will you, be, will you be without sin in heaven? Yeah, after I'm dead and I'm judged. Yes, Yeah. so you will be one day perfected. Yeah, not now. That's Not before glorification. That's what I just said. No, 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 no. This is, yes. the, this is, here's my question then. The, Let me see if I can get exactly clarification. Exactly Let me see if I can get clar clarification yes. from you then. So, do you believe that be ye perfect as your heavenly father is perfect is a command from God. Correct, yes. Okay, do you believe that this life is the life that you have to prepare to meet God? Like to it says in the Yeah. Okay, do you believe um, Doctrine and Covenants 82.7 that says... I'm gonna pull the scripture for you. No, I'll pull the scripture for you because there's an actual, there's an answer to this explicitly. Okay. Right, there's, oh, I literally had it pulled up. What do you know? 82.7. What? Doctrine and Covenants 82.7. No, I'm not talking about the scripture, I'm talking about 30 by 27. 
right? Okay. 35, 27, 19. No unclean thing could enter into his kingdom. We're talking about God the Father. This is when Jesus Christ, right? We talk, you know, there's a lot of difference. Like, what is the gospel, right? And a lot of people say, well, the gospel is faith and repentance and baptism. And, and it's like, that's such an oversimplification of the truth. Jesus Christ teaches his gospel in 35, 27, verse 14, to, I think it's 27. If you go read it, he literally says, here's my gospel that the Father's given under. Right? Anyway, he says in here, he says, no unclean thing could enter into his kingdom. Therefore, nothing enters into his rest, save it be those who have washed their garments in my blood. Right? So that, that's the, nothing can enter his presence unless they've washed their garments in my blood. And now here's where you're going to say, well, I don't agree with that. But because of their faith and their repentance of all their sins and their faith in the Son of the end. So what's repentance? Following God. It's changing. It's our nature's changing. That is what repentance is. I like to hear that. That's yeah. good. And so that is something that is only possible through Jesus Christ, right? And so in the atonement of Jesus Christ, and this is something that, you know, I, this is, I think... Wait, 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 but what's, what's, what about Doctrine and Covenants 82.7, though? What does it say? It what says, if you repent of a sin, but do sin again, all of your former sins are placed back on you. Let me read scripture. I, yeah, go to it. Well, I can look at it in context, too, right? Because you can look at a million scriptures in context. I think it's Heiser that says, don't read one Bible verse. Or is that Turek? Probably Turek. Yeah. And now really say unto you, I, the Lord, will not lay any sin to your charge, go your ways and sin no more, but unto that soul who sinneth shall the former sins return, saith the Lord your God. Yeah, I yeah. mean, we're, we're all perfect, right? So we're what's all repentance? imperfect. So what's repentance Changing then? our nature. Okay, so what if you sin again? What? If I sin again? Yeah, according to Doctrine and Covenants 82. Well, then seven. I'm still in the process of repenting, am I not? Is that just your interpretation? No. Yeah, I'm answering the question. That's how it, <laughs> Is that, that your interpretation of 82.7? I mean, sure. <laughs> There yeah, you go. You just fell flat on your own logic, man. Yeah. 82.7. I'm not, I'm not saying I have the authoritative truth. No, but no, this is what you do, though. Listen. I haven't read a this, sermon on 82.7. This is, this is, I'm sure but, but this is what you do, though. Mm -hmm. So when I'm quoting scripture to you, mm -hmm. and I say, this I, is what it's saying, you go, well, it's just your interpretation, man. You have a position on 82.7, and I can just look at you and go, well, that's just your interpretation. Well, I don't know. I've never, I've But never what the scripture, scripture looks like it's plainly saying to me is that if you sin again, all your former sins are placed Well, that makes sense, you. does it not? Well, if I, I would, sin, so if I sin, I'm, if I, right, and you would agree with this, so if I sin, you know, I am incapable, I've fallen short of the glory of God. And now we've all sinned, so we've all done that, right? So if I sin, yeah, right, Romans if, 3 right say there. I perfectly, say I, perfect, I receive forgiveness for my sins, I repent fully, whatever, all of a sudden I sin again. Am I then again imperfect and falling short of the glory of God? No. In no. terms, in terms of how I'm justified before God, I'll, I'm never going to be perfect in this life. Those yes. who are without sin, the truth is not in you. So this is what the yes. Bible teaches in terms of the gospel, man. And this is why mm -hmm. it's so important. So it states this: If I, I know you're probably looking for the Bible. I do, yeah. No, so, so, yeah. so I, I, I won't be I perfect, man. Yet, so. I can't be perfect. It's impossible. I'm a human, dude. So. I rest perfectly in the righteousness of Christ. I want to obey God because he's changed my heart. We talked about the piano player. I can't play piano if I'm dead. Oh, it's really inconvenient to obey him sometimes. No, I can't say, I cannot say that my desire, that I always want to do that, I always want to obey. I sin all the time. I get it, I, I get hate, it. I hate it. I get it's it, awful. I get it. So, I wish I didn't, So I here, didn't, right? I feel, you feel yeah. the same way. I get it, I get it. So here's the thing, like, in order for me to play piano, according to the gospel that I believe in in the New Testament, I gotta first be brought back to life. All right, I'm dead. I have no aspect of doing it whatsoever. It's by the grace of God that I even touched the keys. First, I'm brought back from spiritual deadness to play it. And the reason is, is that when Jesus saves my soul according to the gospel, he takes my sins upon himself and then gives me his righteousness. It's in Zechariah in the Old Testament, yeah. Zechariah. We, we can't, we don't have our own righteousness. Just, just, no, just listen. Yeah. So I will that. sin again. Yes. I will most likely sin till the day that I die. Yes. All right. But my former transgressions won't be placed back on me. I'm justified now, declared righteous solely through the blood of Christ and his perfect obedience, his perfect righteousness, his perfect works to the law, not mine. But your sins are forgiven on the day of, you're saying your sins are, you're like, your sins, so, you're, you're, so your sins are, you know, when you're glorified, that's when you become perfect, right? When you're judged, whatever, right? So then that's not even an option for you. Well, right. So you're saying, so from what so this whole conversation that we've had. Yeah, yeah. So the day that your sins are forgiven, right, like fully, is the day that you are judged and brought in the presence of God, whatever, like far from the I future, am right? declared righteous solely through the work of yes, Christ. Yes, but those, those past sins are still imputed on you until the day that, what, right? No, my, my sins now. were placed on Christ on the cross. Yeah, okay. Right? And I can still right. commit sins. It's all like, semantic. I'm just trying to use your language. But no, 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 no. He no, does, no. It does, no my no, sins no, aren't just about. forgiven once I meet God. My sins are forgiven now, and yes. I have the Holy Spirit inside of me yes. who dwells with me by faith in Christ. My sins are forgiven now, man. Yeah. And, and, I will and, never and be I perfect. say there's a condition of repentance. And, and John is too. In, 
No. Oh, the word repent. Oh, come on. Jesus Metan Christ never commands you to repent. No, no, no. Did he Re command you to repent? But repentance, according to the Bible, metanoia in the Greek, is like you said, a change of heart, a change of mind. If you listen to some President Nelson sermons, he quotes the word metanoia all the time. I just want to let you know that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he would agree with me 100% here. So. Except continue. with Doctrine, 80, Doctrine and Covenants 82.7, repentance, and I've heard this taught even from Mormon teachers or prophets, Spencer W. Kimball teaches it, repentance means that you're not doing a sin again. When they interpret, be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Is that not your, is that not your, changed and your, is that not your nature has changed? It says if you sin again, all of your former sins are placed back so on you. So then have you fully repented? Repentance is, it doesn't mean that I'm going to not do an action again. Well, it means your nature's changed, right? Yes. Is your, it, right? And you say, well, it's, of course, it's is your nature perfect? I'm not perfect. Is I make mistakes. Perfect? Is your nature perfect? I have faith in Christ yes. and I'm clothed in the and righteousness so it's being made of Christ. Perfect. I am being saved through sanctification. Okay. By God, but it's not my perfection that saves me. Right. It is the grace of Jesus Christ. And I will be with the Father forever solely through the work of Christ. No external obedient work to the law. Like Article 3, right? We believe that all mankind may be saved through the atonement of Jesus Christ by obedience so to the gospel. So you don't have to take up your cross and follow Jesus Christ. You just have to, like, believe in him. No, no, here, here's the thing. No, I'm just, I'm just quoting. This is what you said. He said, if you know, any no, man yeah. will come after me, let him take up his cross and follow me. Yeah, but you're assuming that obedience to the gospel yeah, ordinances and princi principles are the cross. No. Yeah. No, I, I think that following Jesus Christ is taking up the cross. When I take up that cross, it means I set after Jesus Christ. It so, means I obey his commandments. So obedience to that the gospel the ordinances repentance. and principles is not Jesus' commandments to you? No, it absolutely is. That's what I just and said. It's, it's a part of them. Thank you. So it, it, it what, doesn't replace it. doesn't replace the life, the, the, life of a, cross. the life of a Christian in terms of picking up my cross, Christianity is the death march, man. It's yes, a death march. I agree. It doesn't mean that I'm going to work myself to death. It means, it means he, I will follow Jesus even Christ in my example. suffering, even in this life that we have, I am justified, declared righteous, and because of my love for God, I follow the death march up to the hill. And right? I say the way that Jesus Christ carried his own cross up to that hill, that's what he means. I'm expected to do the same. Man, dude, right? that's heavy, bro. You can't do that. You think you can do what Jesus did? No, I don't, but I'm expected to try. Man. To follow to follow his teachings? To live that to live his life? Absolutely. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm expected to die on the cross with him? No, but I'm expected to do what Simon of Cyrene did. To take up his cross and to follow him. Is that not exactly literally what he did? He took up his cross and threw yes. his perfect work to the law. No, I'm talking about Simon of Cyrene. Oh, did he yeah, not take up his helped, cross and follow Christ? He helped Jesus carry his no, cross. No, but did he yeah. literally not take up his cross and follow Christ? Like, literally, right? Yeah, yeah. No, so. I'm talking metaphorically. I take up that cross and I follow Jesus Christ, right? I try to bless the lives in the ways that he did. I try to live the way that he did. You're going to try yourself to death, man. Oh, I know. And it's and not going to be enough. Work. And that's where Jesus Christ makes all the difference. Oh, my goodness. I, so that's I, all I've got for you, but I really that second bus, so I'll miss it again. Oh. Uh, bro, do you, can you run there? No, but I, I'll just wait over the stop. Okay. Because I just said I don't want to miss the next one. And that, and that's I'm, what, I'm actually enjoying this conversation. That's so why really my heart. And time. that's why my heart breaks as a Christian, right? It's like, man, you're never going to be good enough, dude. You're not going to ever do it. And when you it's when not. you stand before the Father, not, this is my worry. This is where my heart comes from. Okay. Uh, when you stand before the Father, He's going to look at you. He's going to go. <laughs> you thought you could do things to make yourself holy, and in that. No, I don't think I make myself holy. No, absolutely do not think I make myself holy. It says in Galatians 2.21, it says, <laughs> those who seek to be justified by the works of the law, the death of Christ has no effect No, I don't. I, I seek to be justified by the grace of Jesus Christ. So what's different then between the person... I just follow me. I, there's a condition on that, and it's try your best to follow me. That's all it is. Okay. Right? So, and that's taught throughout the Bible. It's taught throughout Scripture. So what's the difference then between the person in the lowest level of heaven and the person in the highest level of heaven? The, the, the toning blood of Jesus Christ, right? Jesus... Right? You read, I mean, you read that scripture again. 35, 27, 14, no, not 14, 17, or 19, 19, right? Jesus Christ says, you know, on that day when he stands before the Father, right, none will enter in his presence, save his garments be washed in the blood of the Lamb, right? That is all Christ is going to see if I stand before him, right? If I do have that faith in him and if I just try, right? Because of their faith and, and if you just try. And, and if I just tried. See, so you don't have to try. You don't <laughs> have to try. This then. is the thing. No, no, no. no, no. I'm asking, do you have to try? The not, my, for my justification and my righteousness, you know, I'm like the thief on the cross, man. S screw all this, man. What am I trying for? See, it's funny because Roman an Paul anticipates you in the book of Romans because he actually presents the picture of the gospel that I presented to you. And he says, and there will be those who charge us by saying, I should just sin then so no. that grace may abound. That's absolutely and then it says, sense. by no means. No, that's that's what you asked me. And that's what Paul anticipates when someone gives them the gospel. Well, I, don't, I don't understand the gospel in that lens. Because that's not the way I see it. You don't understand the gospel of the Bible. That's the problem. That's okay. I do. I, Listen, I fully do. No, no, listen, so... The, the, so I've, read, I've read the whole Bible, I've read, I've read, you know, 
Galatians says. I wish like, I read all of them. God, that's not true. Galatians is is like what, what it warns me and what, why my heart hurts is because there's people called the Judaizers and they were in the church in Galatia. And they, and they demand that all Christians have to live the law of Moses. Yep. And they, they settled that in the Jerusalem conference and they said, no, you're not going to be right, circumcised. Right, but, but, but no, here's the but thing. But we do expect all converts to start to stop having fornication. They also say some other things that we don't follow anymore in the church because we understand that Jesus Christ, right, is not requiring those things anymore, right? He says, well, they should also shouldn't eat meat sacrificed to idols, which we don't do, right? And they shouldn't but eat blood. And so, you know, there's a little bit to that where you say, yeah, of course you don't live the law, but there's a couple of things that maybe we should start doing. No, no, but what, but what do you, the point that Paul is making in the book is he's, the, he's saying that there's people who are saying, yes, you believe in Jesus. Yes, you have faith. But you gotta try this way. You gotta try that way. You gotta just first, you know, circumcise your flesh in order to actually be considered uh, a Christian, right? And he says, no. He says, if that's something you believe, you might as well cut your whole member off. Those who seek to be justified by the works of the law, the death of Christ has no effect on you. It's not, I am justified by the works of Christ because I try. That's not what the Bible no, presents. It's because as the I, no, because Jesus Christ has given me a gift of grace that allows me to return to live in the presence of the Father. And all By obedience to the gospel and principles. And all that he asks is that I try. And that's fine. You can disagree with that. I think, you know, I think the way that you view faith is almost a work in of itself. So you say, well, I have to do this, right? You're, you're putting a condition on that salvation. No, I'm not. I said I'm dead it's in my It's not a conditional, right? Sins. You're not a universalist, right? So no. It's not conditional, right? So there's some condition on it. Well, that's a condition. Well, faith in Jesus Christ. Right? Read these uh, from Moroni right here. Oh, I gotta get going. I, I've said that a million times. I gotta get the next bus, but I mean, I've got the pamphlet in my pocket anyway. I'll probably look through oh, it later. Which, which one did you get? Yeah, yeah, look at this one. Or? He got this one. No, I don't. By Grace, this one, these ones in Moroni speaking about Moroni how time? grace is affected upon a person, and it's always after baptism, after um, after baptism here, then they're counted among those of Christ. Oh, Moroni yeah, no, 10, that's, about, like, that's literally the, the scripture that we use. Why we keep membership records? Because when we talk about the body of Christ, the church. That's why we don't make members, you know, we don't make those records when people don't make those. They can come to church every week, right? And cool, are they part of the church, the body of Christ? No, because they haven't been baptized and we put them, we write their name down. So that's literally what that means. Yeah, I'm right. just, I, I'm, I'm trying to basically well, I'm just demonstrate. You what that means. I'm you what that yeah, means yeah, yeah. From a Latter day Saint, right? Because I read that and then I actually like do something about that, which is, you know, we keep baptismal records. So. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's hard for me to believe that. This is talking about them meeting. What like, that's the Book of Mormon intends here is administration. No, it, that chapter, or, if you read that chapter, it's about like, it says the church met and prayed together often so that, and it lists a bunch of reasons why they actually met. Like, this is literally talking about church administration. Moroni 2 through 6, and then chapter 8 are all about like, okay, here's the way that we're going to bless the sacrament. Here's the way that we're going to do this. So if you want to read that in context, that's exactly what it is talking yeah, about. Yeah, I'll, so, I'll, I'll read it. Is that in context or yeah. is that just your interpretation? No, if you read chapter 2 and then chapter 3 and chapter 4, so one is like, it talks about the ordination of priests and teachers and one is about the sacrament. It's literally talking about church administration. So you believe context actually determines truth in the passage? Oh, we, we've been talking about It's this not just your interpretation. Really just said but it's not just your interpretation that. though. Well, well, I'm telling you about how this has been interpreted in the Church of Christ. Oh, so it is an interpretation. Totally it's not necessarily true. Well, yeah, I believe a prophet can totally interpret the scripture. I don't have to. I don't have that authority. Uh, the prophet but, but of God you're, can But you're switching your games again. That's what? what I'm saying. You said, well, the context and all this is that. Have you been Have you been ordained at the hand of God to be a prophet? Have you called a prophet? In the oh. same way that Russell Nelson has. No, the question is, is have they? Right. Uh, absolutely. No, right. they haven't. And they so, can't contradict previous revelation. That's fine. And so, but you try to determine Russell truth through context in scripture. can interpret the scripture. I'm just holding you to your own logic, I got, man. really got to go. I okay, don't want to okay. miss this one again. Hey, I'm Andrew. Pleasure. What's your name? Andrew, nice to meet Andrew. you. Andrew, pleasure to meet you. I'm Abe. Me too. David. David. Nice to pleasure meet you. Pleasure to meet you both. Um, yeah, I, I appreciate the conversation. That was a good I'm conversation. I'm sorry we couldn't see eye to eye on everything. You know, ultimately, at the day of judgment, one of us will be right, one of us wrong. We'll, you know, we'll figure it out. So. Yeah. God loves you both. God bless. Have a good night, Abe. Take care. Good night.